Praise God. Praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you're having a blessed day in the Lord. Come on, somebody. Give him praise. Give him honor. I have a dust set the Lord this morning, and it's very deep. Um, as a matter of fact, I actually have on the screen the definition of revelation because I think people don't understand. Number f- one thing is that a lot of people don't under- understand the book is called Revelation, not Revelations. It gives revelations, but it doesn't have an S on it. So I want to go ahead and get started. It says, a surprise, this is a noun, a surprisingly and previously unknown fact, especially one that is made in a dramatic way. So now y'all know why prophets are so dramatic. Revelations about personal life, it's disclosure, divulgence, declaration, utterance, announcement, report, news. Um, the second the second definition says the divine or supernatural disclosure to humans or something relating to human existence or to the world or the world. Praise God. Praise God. So I'm actually going to go out of here right quick because I want to go over Revelation. Hold on a minute. 21. OK, so and I'm going to go ahead and read it. It says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And I'm going somewhere with this. So let me go ahead and continue with the word of God. And there was no more sea. I'm going to read that again. We're in Revelation. This is the King James Version. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there were no more sea. Verse 2. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared as a bride adorned to her husband. Number three, verse three. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they should be his people and God himself should be with them and be their God. Verse four. And God, I want y'all to really listen to this one. And God should wipe away all tears from their eyes and there should be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither should there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. 5. And he sat upon the throne, said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write for these things, these words are true and faithful. Verse 6. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Verse 7, he that overcometh, I want y'all to listen to that one, shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Verse 8, but the fearful, I need y'all to hear that, but the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable and murderous, and homongers, and sorcerers, idolatries, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Come on, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, full of the seven last plagues. And talk with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And I want to just touch base on the seven last plagues. That's what you're seeing right now with the food, the water, the um, fires, the Amazon fires. Y'all got to understand what's happening. Um, the vows are, have been opened and released. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let's go verse 15. And he talked with me that had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. 16. And the city lie four square and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furloughs, furlongs, the length and the breadth of the height of it are equal. And I was telling y'all how God deals with numbers and that's why everything's about numbers, even the elite. And he measured the wall thereof 140 and 44 cubits according to the measure of man that is of the angel. Verse 18. And the building of the wall of it was like jasper, and the city was pure gold, like into glass. Now, I think I've told y'all, um, and I just want to stop for a moment. I told you my, um, it wasn't even a vision. I actually visited heaven. I know it sounds crazy, whatever, go to God. Um, I've never been to hell, thank God. <laughs> Not even a visit, um, I, you know. But I have been to heaven. Uh, it was in 1996, 97. I don't remember the year vaguely. But, um... God, I had an open body. 
I would say, a, um, we call it an out-of-body experience, okay? Where God took my spirit, and I was in whole flesh. And when you visit heaven, or whatever the case may be, you you are, you don't look the same. Because I was in pure white, and my hair was like long down to my um, buttocks. And so I was like, okay, I like that one. But I never forget, it was so much pure gold. And I'm, it was not gold like I saw on this earth. And we was in a room, and Jesus and I, we were just standing there. And I and every time I run, it's like I was like a little kid. I was running, and I every time I pick up some gold, I say for me, and then shake his head, like yes. And then I'll go in another place and I'll pick up some gold again. I say for me, and he said yes. And that was it. That was it. I keep it very simple. I'm not gonna lie or add to what happened. Then I was brought home, and I said, okay, God, you gonna give me some gold? But I think he wanted me to know that heaven is real and that he has prepared a place. Because there was no, we we didn't talk long. We didn't, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm just not going to add on. That's all that happened. So I know heaven is real. It was beautiful. And to be honest with you, I remember feeling so much peace and I didn't want to come back, but you know how that goes. All right. So let us continue. Praise God. Praise God. All right. 19. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with the manner of precious stones. The first foundation was Jasper, the second Sapphire the third of uh, Chalodon and the fourth and Emer. And I believe that these are different, um, big, you, you know, different sections, different floors, the fifth Sarnitz, the sixth Sardis, the seventh Calistrite, the eighth Burl, the ninth a Topaz, the 10th a Syrophus, the 11th, if I'm saying it wrong, please excuse me, you guys, 11th a Jacinth, the 12th an Amethyst. All right, 21. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Oh, my God. Y'all understand that? I'm trying to tell y'all something what God showed me this morning. Every several gate was one of a pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as if it, as if it were transparent glass. That's something, huh? Um, verse 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Praise God, praise God. 23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor unto it. 25. And the gates of it should not be shut at all by day, for there should be no night there. Oh my God, that's beautiful. And they should bring the glory, 25, and they should bring the glory and honor of nations into it, 27. And there should no wise enter in it anything that defile it, neither whatsoever work it abomination or make it a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And this is the word of God. This morning, God was telling me, he said, Deanna, tell them heaven is real. That's why I told y'all my story. Tell them I do judge. Tell them there is a real lake of fire. Warn the people that I shall come soon. Oh, hallelujah to his name. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. He said, I shall come soon. Hallelujah. He said, but I'm telling you right now, tell them I will judge their works. Hallelujah. There is a real lake of fire. There is a heaven. There is a hell. He said, choose wisely. Let me tell you something. People are dying. People are dying. People are dying at an alarming rate. And he said that they are not considering the cost. He said, Deanna, they are living for today and not eternal. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God. He said, Deanna, they are living for today and not eternal. You got to make a good choice, people, because uh, you got a lot of people, and I'm going to be honest with you, that act like they don't care. Oh, I don't care. I'm going to get mine. I'm going to kill. I'm going to steal. I'm going to rob. I'm going to lie. I'm going to disrespect my parents. I'm going to do what I want to do. Oh, but on that day. And, and then the crazy part is if their life is cut off or something happens, they, they don't even understand because they think, okay, I'm just going to die. No, there is such thing as the second death because we are going to be judged. And when we come before the judgment, if your name is not written in the book of life, you will have eternal judgment and you will be placed in eternal fire with brimstone, point blank. You know, let me tell you something. Pra praise God. Praise God. I feel the power of God. I got to slow down. God was telling me, say, that's why the enemy came in the church from the world standard don't judge don't tell nobody nothing because now 
no one is convicting people of their sin. I didn't say condemn them. We don't have the right to say, oh, who's going to heaven or hell, but convict them, compel them to change. Thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Because it's real. Let me tell you something. And, and I know it sounds crazy. I, I'm kind of, ain't no kind of real Christians are nosy. We watch everything. Everybody y'all watch me. Is she real? Is she going to stay real? You're better. I'm going to say the truth. You see, a lot of people don't like to be watched. No, we are to be watched. Watch. That's right. Be watchful and alert, said the Lord. Hallelujah to his name. But let me tell you something. You got to understand and you got to count the cost because this stuff is real. Where are you going to spend eternity? Praise God. Praise God. A lot of preachers are not teaching conviction because they want that money. Let me tell you something. You're supposed to preach and teach and reach with conviction. And if you feel bad, then honey, that's right. Feel bad because that means you're doing wrong in the story. It could be me, you, anybody. Hallelujah. But people like to feel good. Oh, come on, somebody. This world is entertainment. Oh, hallelujah. Notice entertainment. Containment. That spirit is entering and containing you. The enemy thinks to taint you. The enemy thinks to take you with him to hell. I'm telling you what thus said the Lord. This stuff is real. So you got to count the cost because here's the deal. Your spirit must understand that your flesh cannot contain and con cannot enter into heaven. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. So if you're doing abominable things, if you're doing wrong, if you're sinning, you have to ask God, God, keep me. God, change me. God, rearrange me. God, I don't want to die in sin. That's what this is about. And that's what preaching, that's what the word of God does. The word of God strengthens you and it also corrects you until you get that thing together. Now I see you. Oh, come on somebody. Whether you say it or not, can't you tell a liar when they lie? Can't you tell somebody when they sin it? Oh, we all know it. You may not say anything. You may look like, oh my God, or you may just tell somebody else. That's why gossiping. Oh, you know what they doing on the low, low? Uh, but people already know. And let me tell you something. The spirit of truth is so heavy on this earth. Liars are having a hard time in this season. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Even a baby talking about it. They can't even talk and they just shaking their head. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. This stuff is real. Count the cost. And what are we to do as pure Christians? We are to warn the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to his name. So I just, I'm just being obedient in what God have called me to do and to say. And I know that I give hard words, but here it is. I rather you dislike me. If, if it takes that to save your soul, cause I'm going to say what God has to say. And trust me, I know it'd be hard because I'd be like, God, God, God. But guess what? I uh, thank you, Lord. Let me tell you this before I get off of here. I'm a nosy Christian and we're supposed to be, by the way. And I'm not talking about being in people business. Now, I'm not talking about that, but we are to be watchful, alert, hearing, seeing, watching everybody. That's right. Hallelujah. And one day I asked God, I said, God, have you ever had a bad day? And you know what God told me? He said, Deanna, I have not, but I will. I said, what do you mean? He said, on judgment day, I have people that think that I'm just a God of love. They have no idea that if they are not in good standing, when judgment comes, I will have a bad day because I'm going to toss them in the lake of fire with the devil. Okay. Did you understand what I just said? Is anybody comprehending what I just said? This stuff real. And, and I was like, wow, he really answered. And he really said that. Woo! hallelujah to his name. This stuff real. This stuff real, and, and people get offended. Oh, how dare you? How do whatever? God bless you. Go ahead with that foolishness. It's right there in the Bible. Stop it. All right. God bless you. God keep you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Roll out soldiers, for that is who we are. God bless.